Alright, so last episode, I left you hanging to say, to say the truth, to speak the truth about what Botania base we were gonna do. Today, we start that work. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lanox. Welcome back to another fine edition. Fine edition of Survival Stores. I don't actually know if it's a fine edition by the time I welcome you back to one, though. So we just have to assume. Is my volume down very much? Oh, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, when I... Oh, that's too loud for me. That's too loud for me. Here, let's do this. Aha. See, when I... When I don't record, I don't use my headphones, and my speakers are so much louder than my headphones. Oh, free slag much? Mm-hmm. All right, let me talk to you about what we're doing here. Check this out. I've taken down all the trees, and we're gonna be working here today. I want to get the basic foundation of my Botania base to be today. Just uh, just uh, some some scaffolding like like this. We ain't gonna use those blocks. But mainly, what I want to focus on today is to get the um, botania started. I want to get a little bit of mana production, and I want to automate living wood and living rock. So that is what we're gonna focus on. And I hope that you guys will enjoy. Of course, what is this marble? Oh, it's marble. That's very rare in survival stories, mind you. Very rare to find to find this type of marble. The spawning rates are low. Um, oops. All right. So the first thing I'm figuring out here. Can you see what what I'm trying to to create here? <laughs> the hanging gardens. Mm hmm. If you guessed it in the last episode, you were right. Very good guess. You're clever. Um, and I think. What we're going to be doing is layers. If you don't know what Hanging Gardens is, go uh, Google a picture. I will try to make my take on a Hanging Gardens. I don't think there is really a set thing that tells you what it, exactly how exactly it looks in that. But um, anyway, I think what we need to do here... Um, the, the, the one thing... Here's... <laughs> try to say something, Iskal. The one thing that is important is that it's... Uh, a square is that the all sides are equal that's what I found during my investigations but what I think I will have to do here when I see this is move this out maybe three blocks yeah go out three blocks that will leave us uh, that that will look more symmetrical or not symmetrical it would look more um, hmm what's the English what's the English word uh, I don't know proportional yes proportional mm-hmm so move this out, this bottom layer, and as I said, I really just want to get the scaffolding of this done, so I ain't gonna do any base work, really, other than, you know, getting this thing out. So that is one corner. Let's have a look. Let's have, let's have a little look, look see. Uh, yeah, you see, this needs to go out depending on how big we want this square, and I'm thinking right along here should be fine to go inwards. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if I can pull this off. Really, really excited about this build. It's a, it's a thing that I've been wanting to build for so long. And I think ever since, like, episode 2, when I did my first Botania stuff here in Survival Stories, uh, I've, been, I've been wanting to do Hanging Gardens. I was almost tr uh, starting one at the factory once. <laughs> that would have looked weird. Um, and I think over at Lanox here, where we are now... It's because this is a pretty bright build. This is a pretty, you know, there's light, there's a lot of uh, uh, lush, lush, yeah, a lot of green foliage. So it doesn't make all the sense in the world, but I think we'll mix it up. We'll make it so that it fits here. We we don't have to do it like most of the uh, Google pictures are. That would be crazy. We want to take, we want to do our own take on it. Okay, all right. I think we're getting a pretty good skeleton going here. Uh, we're gonna do three layers to begin with. We'll see if we add something in the middle. Maybe we do that later sometime. But the measurements are 13 across as a pathway here. And up here it's 13 as well. That leaves us with a 33 by 33 top layer here. And that's pretty cool. 
Yeah, I would like to get a little bit of a flooring situation. For now, I think I'm gonna use that beloved, beloved, beloved cobblestone. Uh, I tell you, I gotta change my recording software. DX Tori is great, but it kills your frames. I'm running here, you know, building in this Lanox area at 120, 100 and, you know, 40 frames per second. Mm -hmm. Hit the record button, and it jumps between, it's currently sitting at 25, and then it jumps up to 60. Now, I asked you quite some time ago about suggestions for recording software that would differentiate the audio track and the um, mic. And I just search for track. Um, and I got some good answers. One program that I'm going to try, that I'm going to check out, is going to be uh, Action. Um, I've heard good things about that program. Oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. We're going to start working right up here. Alright everybody, we're at a stage here now with the Hanging Gardens to be uh, base, where I'm starting to... Put down some infrastructure things. We're gonna load some chunks. We're gonna have a magnum torch. I pulled, <clears throat> I pulled a ME cable here with a P2P tunnel. I've done that so many times on camera, so I figured I'd just do it off camera. Save some minutes here uh, to focus on Botania. Uh, and if you want to find out how the P2P tunnels really work, then go check out my tutorial that I made for you all uh, on on the subject. Okay, so I'm trying to get a little bit of an infrastructure here. We're gonna have our um, Emmy network linked up. There we go. Very nice. Uh, check this out. Uh huh. It's looking pretty cool in it. Is it nighttime? Well, no. But I think that looks pretty good. If anything, I may have wanted it a little bit taller. Um, but now to the Botania things. The first thing we're gonna do, we do have a few Botania things already, as we did this in episode 2 and 3, I believe it was, <laughs> a long time ago. But we're pretty much gonna restart it. So, I'm going to want a book. Let's pick up one of those. And a sapling. Any sapling will do, I'll go with oak. Oh, they changed the look of the Botania Lexica. Oh, look at that. You know what I wouldn't mind doing? Check this out. I want to show you this in case you didn't know. Put down an anvil. Take this and you can name this whatever you want. So, mm, 42. What is the answer to the life, the universe and everything? 42. So that's our Botania. Now check this out. It says the name on the book right here. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, so we got our Lexica Botania. This is basically your guide to Botania. Everything you want to know is in here. And I'm not going to go through that. Uh, I'm simply going to go... To the steps. Now, uh, the next thing I want to show you is that this whole area, I want to make use of the Botania block, specifically the Living Rock brick. I think this is a super pretty block. And there is another one here. Can we grab some seeds? Yes. Check this out. Um, Skolda and Joe on the fan server are using this for the uh, for their base, for their farm base. Oh, that's such a good combo. And you could even go with a little bit of uh, ordinary living rock, and I guess, are there... Oh, there's the cracked one, and the framed. How do I... Take some cobble, okay. Let's let's, just, let's have a little play, play around here. See how these look together. Boop, boop. Oh, that's a beautiful combo. <gasps> mm. This one, I'm not so sure about the framed one, but the others, and does it mix with this? Yeah, sure does. Sure does, so we could come in here and we could do boom, boom. Oh, yeah, this whole thing would be living rock. Uh, however, before we can get anywhere close to starting to design this place and to start with Botania, and I'm gonna need my hammer, uh, we are going to have to make sure we have a lot of living rock and a lot of living wood because we may want to use this as well. Look at this. Mm hmm. It's pretty. It's so pretty. Uh, so, let's put up an automated way of getting living rock. So, first thing I'm gonna need is a pure daisy. We do have two, very good. Uh, and to show you how this works is you put a pure daisy down and if you surround it with smooth stone, that will slowly turn into living rock and then you harvest it. 
Uh, so we'll let that sit there. I wouldn't mind having a few more of these Petal Apothecary, uh, Pure Daisies. So I'm gonna grab a Petal Apothecary, put that down there, a Hero update. Oh, what the crap? <laughs> okay, well, yeah, just silly thing. Okay, a Petal Apothecary, I'm gonna fill that with water. Did I have any seeds? I did, yes. Fill that with water and we're gonna need some white petals, which we do have tons of. Remember, we did the, in episode 15, we did the flower farm, so we have a lot of flowers, which is really gonna help us. Four of those and then a seed in this petal apothecary, and boom, that gives us our pure daisies. So, did I put one too many? I think I did. Well, that's worked. Okay, maybe do one more here. Boop, boop. Oh, my goodness, there, there are a lot of crap in there. Can I just do that? Nope. Uh, one thing that she have changed, Vasky, the author of the mod, is that you can actually use this now with your Botania Magnet, so it won't disturb your work. And check this out, now it changed. So the way you get this now is just by mining it. We don't want to do that, though. We want to automate this, and I got a pretty good idea for how to do so. Uh, for now, I should say, I'm just gonna spam up the uh, the things here, our infrastructure, and then we'll move it slowly as we kind of progress in this build. I hope that's fine by you. It's not usually how we do things, but, you know. Um, the first thing you're gonna want to do, we're, we're gonna do this on camera, is place down... Hmm. You know what? We're gonna use SFM to automate this, by the way. You're gonna need some block gates, so I'm gonna put a block gate down... How do I want to do this? Let's let's dig out a um, three by three there, and then I'm gonna come. Hmm, do I want these to come one down? Maybe. Yeah, I think that would look better. I know this is only temporary, but still, I mean, I would drive myself crazy. Now, what you want to do is place down block gates, eight of them, and they are going to be what places that stone that we place around the pure daisy. Uh, then, very important step that many, I, this build is common by the way, but many don't know about this, and this is actually pretty clever. Um, now, when you place down your eight block gates, come down underneath, and then right click to get the focus of the block gate on the, on the bottom side. So now, it still have the place, uh, <laughs> the, the place side is on top, but... It has the focus, which I don't really understand what it's for, at the bottom. The only thing I know is that this is super important. Uh, now, go ahead and cover that up with, with some cabling action. And can I do... I'm coming here, put down a cable. I'm probably going to want some sort of uh, super system here. Well, let's do... Yeah, I have an idea. Let's do this for now and let's put our machine inventory manager down. The next thing is place your dirt block there, and then your pure daisy. Now, now we get to the fun part. We are going to want to have Applied Energistics help us out here. So, why did I build it so far away from my Applied Energistics base or setup here? Um, I'm going to pull a cable, and I'm going to use... Did I have an interface? Yes, I did. I'm prepared. Who do you think I am? I'm prepared. Uh, I'm gonna play, put the interface there, that's fine. Again, again, I'm usually not very happy with having buildings that just sits like this, but it's gonna help us tremendously in getting the stuff we need to make it pretty, so I hope that you guys are okay with this. Besides, it's pretty easy to follow along once it's just sitting like this. Anyway, wanted to point out, it's highly temporary. Okay, so now we have an inventory here. This guy is going to be exporting wood and stone and a stack of each so he's gonna keep uh, an Im uh, he's gonna keep one stack of stone here at all times and wood pretty cool uh, now let me write a little bit of code off camera here and I'll be back with you in a second and I'll go through the code what I wouldn't mind doing as well while I'm at it is adding a few more of these along the line here so yeah I'm gonna go like this and then have more of this action coming down. Yeah, you, you understand what I mean. Give me a second to do a little bit of this and I'll be back with you. Alright, I think we're at a stage where we can test this 
Oh, this is gonna be so cool if it works. Um, let me just put down these. I've done the code for the stone part. I haven't done the wood yet. But we have five of these um, three by threes now. So that should be pretty quickly. And again, I've been connecting them with the cables on the bottom. And then uh, make sure that you click the bottom side of all of these block gates. Otherwise, this won't work. All right. So you know what I wouldn't mind doing? Uh, actually, let me show you the code first of all. So we have two variables. We have one called block gates and one called state. Okay. The block gates basically contains all of the block gates. It's just a variable that contains all the gates. Uh, all right, that's that's all it is. The state is an empty variable, a local variable that's empty. It doesn't contain anything. Okay, very very important. I see. I've seen some some people do this in their let's plays, and they haven't really been explaining this and why this is important. And some of them haven't have done it wrongly, and it, it works, but it works wrongly. So the state there is an empty variable. Then we have a for each loop which basically says, um, the for each loop says, for every time you check the items in this list, create an element called state, or use an element called state. Well, that's, <laughs> how should I explain this? Uh, loop through, so go through all of the items in my list, and my list is set to the block gates, the white variable, okay? And for every time you do that, assign the current block gate in the variable to the state variable. And that's why we need to have it empty. Okay? So, see, it, look at this uh, as, as if you would be reading a list. You know, reading a big list and you're, you're assigning the different items, the different bullets of the list uh, to a container. And that's our element. Uh, that's our state there. Okay? So, for each time that happens it's going to check whether or not the state, so that's the, the one block gate that it's currently working on, it's going to check whether or not that specific block gate on the upside have any living wood or living rock in front of it. Okay? If that is true, then it's going to import from that current selected block gate, again, that's the state, um, it's going to import from the top, so up, and it's going to import only whitelist, living rock, and living wood. Okay, cool. And it's then going to output that to our ME interface on the upside. And again, I'm assigning a whitelist here because SFM is a little bit buggy with the whitelist and blacklist. So I always assign uh, whitelists on output these days. I talked about that in the last episode, I think. Anyway, it's going to output that into the ME interface. And you know what I wouldn't mind doing for the purpose of testing this? Uh, let's put up a chest here instead so that you guys can see what's happening. Let's change you to this golden chest. Okay, very good. Then, that is what uh, if it's true. So basically, once there is a stone, at the moment uh, I've only configured it to be a stone, but once there is a living rock or a living wood here, it will break it and put it into, a, into this chest. Because remember, if you put an input on a block gate, uh, that means that it's going to break the block in front of it. Do I have any food per se? Anything? Anything at all, please. I'm freaking starving over here. Blueberries. It's good for you. So once that turn, we're going to see that being broken and then put into the put into the gold chest. Okay. Now, if it's false, so if there is nothing in front of it, uh, this whole condition here, if it's, wait, there, if it doesn't have a living rock or a living wood, it's going to go to a second condition, which is going to check again on the current state, so the current block gate, remember, it's going to check on the upside, and it's going to look for cobblestone or oak wood, okay? So if there is any cobblestone or oak wood on top, do nothing. The true here is not connected, so do nothing. That is while we are waiting, so at this stage here, this block gate would be saying, yep, yeah, that's true, so I ain't gonna do nothing. I ain't gonna do nothing, I'm just gonna chill. However, if it's false, if there is no oak wood or cobblestone above it, and, again, this con condition I've already passed, so there's no living rock, there's no living wood, this should we... Oh, wait, we don't have the trigger connected. Wait. <laughs> I'll break this, that was a bad demo. 
Again, go back to this condition. If there's no living rock and no living wood, go down here, check if there's any cobblestone or oak wood. If not, if that is full, so it's, if it's empty like it is now, then go ahead and grab from the ME interface, stone. As I said, I've only configured this with stone. And grab one, okay? Because remember, we are working per block gate here. Even though we have it in a variable, we are working per block gate with this state. So grab one stone and I'll put it, guess where? If you guessed the state, you're right. So I'll put it to that block gate on the upside and whitelist output again, I put stone and oak wood just to make sure because SFM is buggy. So basically what it should be doing, I've just been talking here for seven, 10 minutes, but what it should be doing is once there is no block above it, go ahead and place a stone from the ME interface above it. Then wait until that turns, then you're allowed to break it and put it in the chest. Now, let's try it. Okay, you ready? Boom. All right. Oh, boom. There we go. Look at that. How cool isn't that? It just plays stone everywhere instantly like drrrt. And now it's going to chill out here until it turns into living rock. So let me fast forward. You ready? Come on now, living rock, don't make a liar out of me. There. See? See through, it's bro it's broke it, it's broke it, and then replaced it. Now, Botania in the current version, unfortunately, have a little bit of a lag here, so this is actually not a living rock. See? It's actually a stone that hasn't updated. These should change as well. Yeah, there we go. Wow. That is so cool. I'm so happy with this build. And now we're quickly going to be collecting living rock here. And again, that's just a block update sync issue. So don't think that it skipped any. We have five. Five times eight is 40. And we have 40 living rock in the chest. That, my friends, is automated living rock. Now we can. I can go ahead and do the same for wood. And I will in a second. Before I do though, I let me put up something to demonstrate why this thing here, this little thing here, is important. All right, so I put up a little uh, example here, if you will. If I place cobblestone in this chest, it has a code where it's going to pick it up from the chest as I, and it's going to put it in the block gate on the upside. Again, let me just double check that. Yes, it's going to put it on the upside. Now, if I put cobblestone in here, check, the, check that out. It places it up here. It's going to try again, I hope. Oh, maybe I have to remove that. Yeah. So it places it up there, which wouldn't work with our setup here. Um, and if I would come and set the focus to there, it will place it on that side. And again, I'm not sure why it's behaving like this or what this is for, but I'm sure someone of you is clever enough to tell the rest of us in the comments why. Uh, so please do that. But what I know is if I would block this side, like so, it would just place it... No, sorry, if I block that block there, it will now always place it where it should place it. So what I did here was that I put the focus on this thing on the bottom, like so, and then I had cable here blocking any possible placement of block on the downside, which will always then place it on the top, like as all. Cool? So that's a little explanation. Another very important thing before I do the wood thing here, uh, <clears throat> that some of you may have may have uh, seen here is that when we check if there is any stone So that should be here No, wait uh, This condition. Yes, when we check if there's any stone in front of this Which we do otherwise it would try to output a new stone and a new stone and, no, and a new stone We are actually not checking for smooth stone, but we're checking for cobblestone. Why? Because the block gates here, they will only know what block it's going to become when you break when they break it. And when a block gates break a stone, it's going to turn into a cobblestone. I can't actually show you this by doing... Uh, well, I'd have to write some code. Uh, basically, when we do that, it's going to... If I would write quickly an input here, oh, I'm going to regret this when I edit. This is going to take some extra minutes that I wasn't planning for. Blockade, up, activate, whitelist, no, blacklist, 
break anything basically create an output to the iron chest on the upside doesn't matter blacklist okay so now if i take this out here uh basically the code will break this piece of stone and will put it in the chest boop and when it breaks it it turns it into cobblestone so that is what the block gate recognizes as above it that's why we have cobblestone should i change it to stone this thing wouldn't work so very important step okay i go put up the wood version of this now i'm gonna mix it into the same build and i want to put up a condition which makes it so that we always have a, a stack uh or sorry not a stack that we always have a certain amount of this and then i'll be back with you all right there we go wood is now implemented uh it, it, i've been watching this for for a while here and it's quite interesting to uh see how it selects blocks see now we'll go all wood probably yeah and then every now and then it go all stone and then every now and then it go mix like you just saw there and i don't really know what takes priority it's it's kind of weird but uh, here's how i did the final code then i have a trigger uh every second and i'll probably change this to a condition trigger so uh, i'll have a condition up here saying if we have a certain amount of living rock or a certain amount of living wood then don't don't run the the, the instruction otherwise run it but for now it's just a trigger and i'm probably going to fill up these barrels right i use barrels instead of the chest as i um it's going to be interesting to see what happens when they're full what's these factory manager does if it just starts to spits it out i'm not sure not sure uh anyway then i have my for each loop and i'm using the same for each loop for both the wood so i have the wood on the right hand side the only difference between the code that we saw is that i'm whitelisting oak wood and i'm whitelisting oak wood on the on the output instead of the stone that i'm whitelisting over here okay actually i'm whitelisting both here Arr. Yeah, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. That's uh, That could be the cause for why the wood have priority. Let's delete the wood there. I think we just missed it. Because the wood seems to be the, the more common one for it to place. Although it seems random. I played around a little bit with the flow here. I have a sequential or have a split and use a fair split. I tried that. Didn't change a thing. Um, anyway, that is the code. Pretty much the same thing for the wood as the stone. I know this uh, episode have been a little bit grindy with Steve's Factory Manager, but, I mean, it's been requested. A lot of people have wanted to see this, so I hope that you have enjoyed. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. There won't be any mana production today. I wanna see how this looks here. I think it would be super cool. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, we don't build it this straight, but you get the feeling, right? You get the feeling... Oh yeah, that's going to be so pretty. And then leaves covering it. Oh, I'm so excited about this base. Hope you are as well. Anyway, go ahead and hit the like button, guys. Don't forget, it means a lot for me if you do. Leave some comments or feedback down below. And I talk to you in the next episode.